As you can tell by this title, we will be discussing the short-lived relationship between Caleb and Cornelia. And please keep in mind, I am only talking about the comics, as the TV show can wait for another day. I undoubtedly know many people fondly remember this relationship, as there still seems to be a lot of people who love it to this day. After all, who doesn't sigh at the profound thought of a handsome and heroic man instantly falling in love with you? A hopeless romantic named Cornelia. What's more special than discovering a strong, compassionate, and dutiful man of your literal dreams? Hey, we were all young and starry-eyed in love at one point in our lives. However, Cornelia and Caleb also represent how dreams just can't overlook the brutal realities of life, and how some things are just not meant to be. So that is what we will be taking a look at today. Let's look at how Caleb and Cornelia came to be and the forces that led them to meeting on that faithful journey into the meta world. As we know, Cornelia would become friends with Will, Irma, Tarani, and Helen. They would later discover that they were destined to become guardians of a magical veil that was designed to keep evil from spreading from a place called Meridian into their own reality. This little push would later cause Cornelia's peaceful life to be forever changed undoubtedly leading her into a series of discovering portals, baffling mysteries surrounding her longtime friend Elion, and much more. Through this, she would become the Guardian of Earth and help liberate the Kingdom of Meridian from the clutches of Prince Phobos. It was also during this time that she would encounter the rebel leader Caleb, who was neither human or Meridian inhabitant like Cedric or Vathic. By stark contrast, Caleb was originally a humble flower given life by Phobos' magic and created to be a whisperer. A whisperer is essentially a subservient creature who caters to Phobos' every need and desire. They are so loyal and isolated that they themselves state how the people of Meridian and the Oracle of Kandrakar do not respect them, as they appear to be a little bit off-putting. And it was during this time that Caleb and a couple of other whispers would think critically about the prince's cruel nature. And in these crucial moments is when Caleb would develop a conscious will of his own and evolve into a completely different form. He would miraculously transform from a soulless creature of subservience into a fierce warrior who wanted nothing but a free world for all of the subjects of Meridian. And as Elion became lured from Earth to Meridian, Cornelia would one day come to meet Caleb, as fate would intended them to do. And from that precise moment, the two would pursue their romantic feelings towards each other. Cornelia has been described as many things, but most often she would be described or depicted as stubborn, calm, and a little judgmental. However, after you get to know her, you soon discover that she is tender, protective, and loyal to those she loves. These people are often her family, friends, and eventually Caleb. During the first arc, she merely demonstrates this stubbornness as she recollects about the year before when Elion, her best friend, supported her during a figure skating competition. During their time after the competition, Elion would joke about how all Cornelia needs to make this moment perfect is to have a knight in shining armor sweep her off her feet, mentioning that Peter Cook would have made a suitable boyfriend as Cornelia admits she turned him down for a date once again. Elion would then inquire why her friend would turn down a remarkable guy like Peter. As Cornelia remains firm in the belief that her one true love is the only one for her, whoever he may be, which later comes to fruition as Elion gifts her with an accurate drawing of Caleb. Even after months of having Elion missing and under the sinister influence of Phobos and Cedric, Cornelia would still have faith in Elion as just being a misguided person and not a cruel villain as the other girls implied. This is when we get a proper look at Cornelia as a character and why this would play a fundamental role in her relationship with Caleb. Cornelia really is considerably different from the other girls. She can be a little bit more withdrawn and, as Irma states, very stubborn and cannot easily be changed. 
as she is the first to typically respond to any circumstance with understandable skepticism and doesn't easily get swayed. An essential trait that has been demonstrated to be both a positive and a negative influence inside Cornelia, making this her personal flaw. And this perceived flaw is not something that people should view as horrible. Instead, flaws should be seen as the essential trait of human nature as they are a defining trait of humanity. And Cornelia with this personal flaw is when her humanity shines at its brightest. At her core, we discover that Cornelia is grounded, protective, loyal, sentimental, and gracious to those she loves dearly. However, they can also make her blind to the harsh reality that she can sometimes not see at a first glance, until she begins to think critically about the situation around her, at a reasonable pace that she can understand. Caleb in the comics was born under a bizarre set of circumstances. He doesn't have a mother or a father in the traditional sense that all humans or Meridianites do. Instead, his creator was a cruel prince who cared for nothing but his own selfish desires. An obsessive, sinister desire for power and absolute control over life itself. Mostly due to the fact that the prince felt snubbed of a birthright that rightfully belonged to his little sister. And this is who Caleb and the other Whispers had to dedicate their lives to. Caleb only became his true self the moment he realized that having Prince Phobos as a ruler was what made Meridian into the hellhole it was. And if he was to serve someone, then it would be someone who was worth protecting. Someone who was worthy of Meridian and all of its inhabitants. Someone who would undoubtedly see the pain and unspeakable suffering being forced upon the land and eventually come to see that they were just like the people of Earth, worthy of freedom, prosperity, and a right to live. This is Caleb at his core, and he is, by all means, a warrior who believes it's his legitimate duty to defend the legitimate heir of Meridian. And Caleb takes great pride in this belief, that if he were to be removed from this existence, he would feel lost and completely bored with his own life. And there are a couple of times when both Cornelia and Caleb think critically about their relationship. Cornelia at one point begins to wonder how such a person like Caleb would thrive in a world like hers, thinking deeply about how Caleb would react to meeting her family, enduring school, and how human life would treat him. And while Caleb becomes overwhelmingly focused with his task of being the Herald of Kandrakar, he displays his true nature, causing us, the audience, to wonder if Cornelia truly fits into his life as a warrior. He is never afraid to lay his life down at any given moment when danger arises. And it's during these raw moments that we see how these two individuals are possibly just too different for each other, and maybe the love that they have for each other is just not meant to be. In fact, maybe one could argue that it's possible that Caleb and Cornelia weren't destined to love each other, but to respect each other, respect each other enough so that their true destiny was to help Elion secure her throne away from Phobos. Eventually, after the grueling battle between Nerissa and her dark army, Caleb and Cornelia are finally able to discuss their future in private. Caleb reflects on how during his cruel imprisonment, he was able to conclude that their relationship is more difficult than it actually appears stating that he doesn't know the real Cornelia, and only her guardian appearance. Which, we the audience can instantly understand that Caleb has not spent enough time with Cornelia, either outside of Meridian, Kandrakar, or Earth. Especially since he knows nothing about her personal life on Earth, such as her family, her personal interests, goals, fears, and nothing else. And it becomes crystal clear that Caleb feels conflicted about being in love with two sides of a person, and not just one. This is when we start to recognize the flaws in the relationship. And it's this face that Cornelia makes that positively confirms it. She knows there is something wrong, and she knows that she can't lie to herself. And essentially, 
Caleb correctly points out how Cornelia may have the appearance of an adult when using her magic, but deep down at her core, she possesses the mind of a child who is not ready for a relationship with a person like Caleb. And it's in this speech alone that he is hinting that both of them need to be in a world that is familiar to them, a world where they are surrounded by friends and family. And this does not make Caleb out to be a terrible person, but instead an absolutely honest and self-assured individual. And of course, after all that is bitterly said and done, Cornelia reunites with her friends and only being 14 years old, cries bitter tears of a love not meant to be. Caleb and Cornelia's story is arguably the most mature and accurate depiction of getting swept away with childish fantasies surrounding love and fate. And Cornelia best represents that while romantic aspirations are indeed wonderful, they can make a person blind to the realities of life, as it's never healthy to dwell on dreams and forgetting to live. In fact, in the beginning of the series, when she sees Peter and interacting with him, this could be reality showing Cornelia that maybe she's destined to be with him instead, but due to her stubborn nature, she constantly dismisses it and childishly believes that her dreams will reward her with her one true love, whoever that may be. Therefore, it's possible that this is a bittersweet experience for Cornelia to teach others about how things just never work out and that maturing out of childhood is a much longer journey than it actually appears. But what we can learn from both Caleb and Cornelia is that heartbreak can be very painful. However, it can also be used as a tool to help us appreciate the loyal people in our lives. And that as time heals us, it can shape us and mature us into self-assured individuals. And that concludes this video. What do you think? Is it possible for Caleb and Cornelia to stay together? Or do you think they're just better off as they are? Let me hear your thoughts down in the comments. And of course, I'd really like to take this time to thank everyone who subscribed. It really makes my day. And of course, I'll see you next time.